So um, we're going to work with a dummy cake today. I'm going to actually move my camera so you're going to see a little less of me, a little more of the table, um, which is probably to your benefit. Um, so <laughs> so um, we're using two double stacked six inch dummies. Um, they're three and a half inches tall. And when I do these, I was going to make this out of regular cake, but I ended up having to use that cake for something. So for another demo. <laughs> when I do these with icing images, um, a little trick I learned from um, Tasha over at Sweet Elegance, um, or Sweet and Elegance, I'm sorry. She, I used to um, take the icing sheets and put them on fondant and then put that on the cake. She actually applies hers directly to her cakes using a little bit of Crisco, vegetable shortening. Um, yep. And I have found that that does not change the flavor. So everything she told me was true. Not that I thought she would lie. <laughs> um, but she puts a little bit of Crisco along the back and she puts it on the cake and it doesn't change the flavor. It doesn't bubble up because it forms like a seal in between um, your buttercream and your cake. So, so she puts it, she puts puts um, Crisco on the back of the image and then puts it on buttercream rather just than applying it directly to the buttercream? Yes, because when your buttercream starts to sweat, if the mm -hmm. it absorbs too much water, like I am in Georgia. So right now, as we speak, it is 715 and it is 101 degrees outside. Cool. So my cake is refrigerated and my client walks out the door with it and it starts to sweat. The icing sheet can bubble. Um, Makes or sense. Can bleed. The Crisco forms a very thin shield to prevent that. So that totally it makes sense. Out. It actually works right. out really, really well. So that what you just said is very important for everybody to hear because everyone's always wondering whether or not images will bleed or they have problems with bubbling and sweating. And that little tidbit right there, guys, is going to save you from that. Yep. Now, I want, I, I want to say something else because I'm looking at what's in your hand. Um, do you know about eye designs? I do not. Are you going to teach me? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something real quick. Sorry for this caveat, guys, but I, I, I think she's going to want to hear about it. And I think you're going to want to hear about it, too. So what I designs is... If you're going to the edge of this paper, it would make me very happy. <laughs> oh, you can totally do that without eye designs. You just don't have your settings set up properly. Um, oh, see, I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. If you go, um, it, first of all, for your settings, if you want to be able to print edge to edge and the image you have... Um, will stretch to that, you know, because it needs to be proportional, um, then you need to set up your, your, your printer properly. And um, to do that, if you're not going to use iPrint, which is our program, um, then if you go to our website, log in and go to our printer support page, there is a video on the bottom that talks about setting up your printer when you're not using iPrint. And what that does is it's going to set up the margins and all kinds of things so that, uh, and you'll have the correct settings so that you get nice vibrant colors. Um, so make sure you do that. Now, I what- I will now. Yeah, because you you can use that whole sheet. Now, what iDesigns is, is a collection of over 2000 different images all licensed for edible use. And it works with iPrint so that it will print you know, directly to the edges, but you choose from, from those images, they're all in folders and everything, and um, pick your images and bring them down onto the, to the screen and select your paper size. And then once you do that, you um, are able to tell it, okay, I want my cake is, has, is two and a half inches tall. So I'm gonna select two and a half inches and then you'll see it kind of shape, change the shape of the image. And then it, it will also, you can select the option to put a line in there. So it tells you where those two and a half inches are. So then you can run these, they match up edge to edge to edge. So you get that continuous border around the cake. Um, yeah. yeah, and see if you call me up and you tell me, you know what, I love this image and we're able to get it in a continuous pattern, then we can add it to our, we're happy to add patterns at any time. You just gotta let us know. Um, and that if you get our great. email, 
Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I actually, that's pretty. I, I actually took this image um, from a stock photo that I purchased, and then I lined it up. I cut it, and I pasted it, and I lined it up so that when I printed it, it would print edge to edge with just a little bit of overlap so I can join it on the cake. Yeah, so this program does all of that for you. And if you are on our email list, then you got a coupon today for the lifetime subscription. Um, that's over $100 off the sales price. So just a tidbit, I'm going to shut up now, but I just had to tell you that because I was watching what you're doing. <laughs> so here we go. You, you saw you her trim the edges and she applied the Crisco lightly to the back. Yep, we're teaching so, each other. Um, while we were chit-chatting, I what I did was I left a little bit of white here where my pattern is going to match up with this one here and I cut all the white off of here. So this one is going to stick to the white line on the other image that's already on the cake. Now that being said, I want my cake to cover this top, but we're going to fold it. Another trick I learned from Tasha at Sweden Elegant. See, she's just teaching. She taught me all kinds of stuff. Um, so in order to do that, I, I measure how deep I want my cake image, to, my image to be on the top of the cake. And then I'm going to stick it onto the cake. The Crisco in this case is sticking it to the dummy. I'm going to just stick it on here. And y'all, I'm not wearing gloves. I'm not wearing a hairnet. I'm not wearing any of that stuff because this is a dummy just for this purpose. If this was a client cake, I'd have gloves on. I'd have my apron on. I'd have my hair back. I'd probably be wearing a mask as well because in Georgia, we still got some of that. Um, gotcha. So. Yeah, guess where I got COVID from last week <laughs> in Georgia. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> not, a of, not a lot of people around here believe in COVID is a thing. <laughs> so not. Oh, it is. Oh yeah, I've been there, done that. So I'm gonna stick that one on there. And then for the second mm -hmm. one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my cake over here. I am going to bring this in. Oh. In the Crisco, and I'm literally, like, this is a silicone, I'm gonna put, this is a silicone spatula. And as you can see, I'm just grabbing some Crisco. It does not take, like what I just put on the spatula, we'll do the whole image does not take a lot. You just need to wipe it on there. Make sure I kind of look at it sideways to make sure that I'm covering the whole image um, so that A, it'll stick and B, it will perform what I want it to do, which is to make that seal. Yeah. So Breezy, she is using actually an icing sheet. Um, the smart sheet and the flex frost would actually work the same way. Um, yeah. but for this purpose, what she's doing, because she's applying it to the, uh, buttercream, the icing sheet is probably the better of the choices for this. I will say I have done this with wafer paper. If I know the cake is going to be consumed on the same day, I will do it with wafer paper. Um, my clients seem to favor that, but if it is not going to be consumed on the same day, I use the icing sheets because they last. Um, a little bit longer as far as risking bubbling, bleeding, etc. And they're and more forgiving as far as the the um, as far as seeing through the image. You you can't really see through the icing sheet. Correct. And this was originally going to go onto a chocolate cake. So even though I had crumb coated it, you can still kind of see it through the image. So all I'm doing right now is I'm lining up the image over here and I will trim it over there. I know you guys cannot see what I'm doing, but if I turn this to you, I can't see what I'm doing. So you see here, you barely can make out that seam. Can you guys see that? Yeah, just hold it close just for a second and then it'll focus on it well. Looks good, thank you. And then this side, you have two options. You can either find the pattern, which in, in this particular case is going to be very hard to do just because I only 
lined up one side and not the other. And for the sake of speeding this process up, I'm not going to go through and cut this, but you would cut it to get that white off. Um, so you would not be able to see that white. You would just see the pattern kind of double up there a little bit. But we're going to leave that off for the sake of time. So now you're probably wondering, okay, lady, now you've got all this paper up there. What are you going to do now? All right. So, again. Exactly what I was wondering. Yeah. That's what you were wondering? Is that what you said? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, like I said earlier, another trick I learned from Tasha. You go and you cut your image down to down to the cake. Let's see if I can do it this way so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I give it about a half an inch between cuts. And I honestly had never seen it done this way. I was watching a reel she did and I was like, oh my God, that's genius. If you're gonna have something on top of the cake, if you're gonna have a puff, if you're gonna have, like in this case, we're gonna do um, a, Bowl made out of sh uh, isomalt. Um, those things will cover up the very center of your hole that you will end up with. And I know that doesn't make sense to you right now, but once you see me see what I end up with, you'll understand what I'm saying. And it actually is really cool when you're doing something like um, a money cake, like covered in money. Um, the not brands that shall not be named that we're not supposed to be using designer brand <laughs> images, things like that. When you want to continue the pattern onto the top of the cake, this works out great. You can see it's already kind of doing what I want it to do. Um, so now that I've got them all cut, I'm going to take this first one. I'm going to press it down. Now, by all means, you're this is welcome great. to you're welcome to trim this down here at the edge. I don't like the seam. So when I saw her do this, I was like, holy cow, that's genius. Because I like to have it covered and I knew I was gonna have something in the center. And this is actually kind of a redo um, of another Lily Pulitzer cake that I did for a bridal shower. It was a different pattern, um, but it was a similar design. She wanted the ruffles on the bottom and she wanted the um, pulled sugar on the top. So as you can see, as I fold them over, they stick to each other. And of course, a little bit of decorator's gel. I just used this stuff or the stuff I got from Caljava. Um, and it will stick to itself if you don't already have buttercream or Crisco for it to stick to. So now I just have a small get this to focus. So I have a small hole in the center of the cake. And when I say hole, I just mean the buttercream is shown. Are we still there, Deb? Yes, we are. That's really great. And I know exactly where you're going with it, which is great. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. Okay. Sometimes I mute it because I'll comment unnecessarily and I'll keep interrupting you. So I'm oh, very coming. deliberate with my mute button. So there's two things that are left to do here. The first is making a bunch of ruffles, some of which I've already made in advance because you guys do not want to sit here all night watching me make ruffles. Um, but I am going to make some to show you how I do it. Everybody does it a little bit different. Um, and then we're going to make the pulled sugar bowl. Um, I actually think I'm going to do the bowl first, just so it has time to harden enough to put it on the cake when we're done. So, oh no, my little dog fell in the trash. Okay, so when I was at Ultimate Sugar Show, I was lucky enough, not that I don't already use Simi Cakes products because I freaking love them. Because, again, Florida girl, now living in Georgia, the humidity here is disgusting. So this is the only isomalt that I've used that 
functions properly in our weather and our humidity. Like it's been in the hundreds all week last week and it poured rain. So it was just disgusting outside when I made that sample cake that's in our photo. So that tells you how well this stuff works. So this is um, a mat that was in the stuff that I won. And this is the cup that I'm going to be using to make it do what it do, as I say. Now, um, I, when I use isomalt and I have any left over, I put it into a silicone ice cube tray. Can you guys see that? Yep. So if I have any left over, this is what I do with it to store it because they give them to you in the pretty little discs or the little smaller um, round with the bumps on them. I've already put mine away, so I can't show you, but um, I get a, I have this silicone ice cube tray that I got off Amazon. Uh -huh. And I just pour my leftovers in here and I let them solidify and then I stick them back in a Ziploc bag. This oh, also so you're remaking your tiles. Yeah, this is this is also works when you're making tiles or when you want to make ice cubes, that kind of thing. But for this purpose, this is why they're here. Um, okay. I Can I interrupt you for just? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I want to answer a question before you move too much past it. Um, Breezy Cakes was asking about the Crisco, and she's putting it on the back, so it's definitely not going to smear it. But you, Perfect. there's a little trick too, so I'll teach you something. Um, you can actually paint Crisco the same way on the front, and it makes it very shiny and glossy. So yes. um, just in it, and that will not smear it either, Breezy. Yes, that is correct. Right. And I, I will going. say I want to <laughs> you're fine. I will say some people will use PME spray on the outsides of their cakes when it's a display dummy. I have one that I've done that to, and it's forever shiny. <laughs> so it looks yeah. like I steamed it. It looks like I steamed the fondant, which is what I was going for. Um, so that's another option because the Crisco will, of course, eventually start to yellow. So it'll eventually yeah. change the color if it's something you plan on keeping. Um, but if it's something you're just using because you want your cake to be shiny, go for it. Um, so I have some blue and clear in this cup isomalt um, left over from when I made the one from the dummy. I'm going to add these cubes in here and I will be right back. I'm going to go pop this in the microwave real quick. All right. So if anybody has any other questions, feel free to ask now. I will tell you, you guys know that I rave about Simi Cake products and um, and obviously that's why I sell it and you know that I am love the family as well. So I am very biased, but I will tell you the Claire, you will never ever find another isomalt, even when you're making your own, that will be as clear or crystal clear as the Simi product. So I just need to say that. Yep. And I've never found anyone to disagree with that statement. And I guarantee you, everybody here is going to, that uses it will agree. And Breezy, I'm going to go ahead and I just posted the link to it. It's Simi, Simi Cake Products. Um, here's the link again for you. There you go. Because um, we have it on our site. You can also buy direct from Simi. It just depends what you're buying and what you want to kind of group together in that shipping cost. Yeah, and I've tried a lot of them, and when I found Simi, I stopped. <laughs> I just stopped. Trying. They worked perfectly. It was. I've never gone back. And never. For those of you who. Yep, and for those of you who aren't aware, um, Sydney, who is on here with all the hearts and the kisses, um, but she actually was. She's the owner of Simi Cakes, um, and. Um, when, when you talk about quality, you know how we are with quality. She's worse than me <laughs> as far as being a stickler for quality. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's why we carry her products as well. So, I got about 30 she's seconds still, left. Yeah, so right now she's just uh, heating up that isomalt um, to melt it. Um, and 
then she'll be able to, to use it fine. Now, um, yeah, Breezy, the, the humidity when we were there um, was um, like, I don't know, 100%. It felt like everything was wet, even regular paper was. Carol Fisher says, hey, Debbie, I'm very biased. Also, simicakes.com, love Simi Isomot. It is the very best. I agree 100%. So this, you, mat, my dear. so this mat is a semi-mat. Um, it came with the stuff that I won. Um, and I also have a smaller version of this that I bought. But for what I'm doing today, this I have other silicone mats. And you can pour isomalt onto pretty much any silicone mat that does eye heat. Um, because let me just say, if you've never worked with isomalt, you know how your parents used to say, ah, it'll burn you to the bone. Ask my Anarito. <laughs> Please don't burn yourself. Keep this away from your hands. Um, pulled sugar, it, it can be used as, you know, you can pull it. Um, you need to let it sit until it's cool enough to touch but still flexible. Um, these bowls, everybody does them a little bit different. I'm going to do the way I like to do it just because it's it's what I'm happy doing. And apparently my table is not level. Do you see how that's running? <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay, well, we're gonna stop you right there, buddy. Um, so now, I just- One thing to note, actually, you're not using gloves and a lot of the decorators who have been around for a long time don't use gloves. If you choose not to use gloves, there is a very strong possibility that you are going to get burned pretty bad and isomalt burns are not fun. Um, right. So there are gloves that are sold as well to be used specifically with the isomalt. And in the stuff that I won, there was a set of gloves. It's behind me. <laughs> I just, I've used it enough. Let's hope I don't make, you know, don't have to eat my words today, but I've used it enough that I don't, I, I feel okay working with it without having to um, use the gloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this over to the side for just a minute. As you can see, it's already kind of doing its thing. And I will, as soon as it cools just a little bit more where it's not completely running, I'm going to put it over this cup. Now, the purpose of that... <laughs> Let me just tell you, this, this mat is now, I don't know if you can see that, it's bubbled from the heat on the plastic. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, so be careful what you put underneath it. It's hot. Right? Yeah, You. I mean, it's like, if I, I can't hold my hand here for long. It's hot. Yeah. Maybe Sydney can tell us what the temperature is that it heats up to typically to melt. It's hot enough to give you third degree burns. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. When your parents tell you, yeah. like, I'm Cuban, so we do flan. And when you make flan, you have to do the caramelized sugar to put underneath it. And my mom always used to tell me, that boiling sugar will burn you to the bone. And I used to kind of laugh until the first time I burned myself. And I had a hole yeah. in my hand. So, yeah. It is, been it there, is done that. no joke. So um, the way I know that I'm ready to move this is when it's not doing a whole lot of running anymore. Then I bring it over to my cup and I bring it down. Now, if you're happy with that shape, woohoo, good for you. Keep it that way and you're good to go. If you are not, you can... Manipulate it a little bit. Again, it's still hot. But you can manipulate it a little bit by using binder clips. And clip where you want the bowl to have creases. See, I'm touching, but it's still a little too hot to touch. I want another little crease right here. So I'm going to fold these two together. Now, I do want to say, even if we are talking about how hot it is, I don't want to scare anybody away from it either because we all but use ovens. All. Ovens yeah. are hot. So is isomalt. So don't be afraid of it either. 
Yeah, you just have to be careful. Um, Respect it. Um, exactly. So, exactly. Um, Sydney did say it's 300, 300 degrees Fahrenheit when liquid, 150 degrees when pulling it. Um, actually, 150 degrees after it's pulled. So you see, it's not hot enough that I can't do what I'm doing right now, which is I'm rubbing right. it because I want that side to extend. Now, I could... Mm -hmm probably wait another minute or two and then start pulling but i kind of like the shape it's got so i'm not going to do a whole lot of pulling yeah see like that part right there is thick and it's still a little bit too wet a little bit too hot for me to pull but my bowl has the shape a shape that i'm happy with so once you have a shape that you're happy with you can leave it alone now to give you guys an idea Lift this up. Let's see. Can you see this right here? Yes. So gently, see how it pulled up? Oh, yeah. It's just because it's a thicker piece. So it's not running anymore. It's still a little too hot for me to actually manipulate. Now, if I wanted to manipulate this, I would leave it flat and I'd kind of roll it onto itself with the mat, hold it onto itself and then start pulling. When I feel like I can handle it, I'd start pulling it and making it the shape I wanna make. So the one that is in the demo picture, um, I pulled one end of it to make that part that's taller. I just took it like this right here and I just literally just pulled it. Now, I don't want to keep pulling that one because it's getting thin and I don't want it to break. Um, but when this is cold and it will be hard. So right now I'm just going to leave it off to the side like this. I'm actually might turn my fan on. Let me do that. I love doing this. And yes, Breezy, it is just like making hard candy. It is, it is, yeah. And you can pull it the same way. So I've got it the shape I want it. I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to bring it over to my other table so it will be in the direct contact with the fan, which I know, Finny, I shouldn't really do. <laughs> I just pull off by the time we're done. I, a lot of people use a fan. It's fine. Yeah. So one of the things that I love about isomalt, specifically semi cakes, is if I get an area where I've got air bubbles, as long as it's not too thin, I can take my little kitchen torch and just hit it for a second. It'll bubble up and then the bubbles die down. Um, and then the other part is the PME spray I was talking about earlier. All isomalt will get cloudy um, if it sits long enough. This, I put it on there after it's cooled and it keeps it from getting cloudy. So another little tidbit for you. So Sydney said, um, Chatty, uh, you're, you're much fun to watch. It's so pretty already. Thank and you. She is yes. saying that isomalt is a sugar-free hard candy. It's just unflavored. Yep. Um, yep. So I've never thought I've never thought to even ask. Can isomalt be flavored, Sydney? It absolutely can. I know that answer. <laughs> but Sydney's going to tell us what type of flavorings to use because there's powders and there's oils and all kinds, and she will let us know in one second. It's gotcha. really great that she has taken her time out to be here today. Yes, um, I would certainly appreciate it. Yeah. So that's really nice. So what you got there? So these are ruffles, which I'm going to give you a little close-up of in a second. But I want to show you something because I know that I am going to catch from some of the bakers in here that might do it a different way. I'm going to catch a lot of questions. So. Most bakers, when they do ruffles, they use a circle. I don't. 
I use a hexagon. Now, I know you're going to ask why. For me, <laughs> I, get, I get asked that every time somebody sees me doing it. So this is a ruffle that I made with a circle cutter. Let me get you in focus. Okay, so that one has a few ruffles to it. I made that with a circle. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you one I made with a hexagon. This way. There you go. <laughs> this one. This one was made with the exact same circle size, uh, hexagon size, one inch. This was made with a circle. So I get a lot more ruffle out of a hexagon than I do out of a circle. Gotcha. And they are also, they can be formed in all different ways where the circle, you pretty much end up with either this or mm -hmm. a U with a U around it. So I, I like the flexibility of the hexagon. Now I am going to try to get you real close there. Can, any, uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. So I'm kind of watching it on my laptop to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So hexagon. I would tell you if we couldn't. Um, I rolled it out pretty thin. Let me hold that there. Rolled that out pretty mm -hmm. thin, not too too thin because. We're going to take the ball roller, the ball tool. I like to use the big end of it. And we're just going to take those edges and we're going to smooth them out. Now that loses those corners. Okay. So you end up with just this little push down in the center, squeeze, push down the other direction and squeeze. And now you have a roll. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So if you've never done ruffles before, don't be afraid, but I will tell you right now that a 10 inch cake has approximately 197 ruffles. So if you take on a ruffle cake, please charge for it. <laughs> yeah. Because I've done this 100,000 kajillion billion times, so I can do it very quickly now. But as you can see, even so, it takes time because each ruffle needs to have the edges done. Each ruffle needs to be bent. If your fondant's too soft, they won't hold their shape. If your fondant's too hard, they'll crack. Um, this can be done with modeling chocolate as well. Personally, I've tried it, I don't like it. Um, I think it's a little too soft. Mm -hmm. But I have, I'm gonna make a few more just so you can see how I'm doing it. So I run my ball tool around the edge that leaves your center thick i don't know if you will be able to see that uh, maybe maybe yeah. this like for you to see it but the oh yeah it's definitely not focused let me see if i turn the light off for a yeah. second yeah that, that's going to make it help it because the light's shining against it Okay. Just give it one. There you, okay, there you go. Um, try to bring it up just a little bit closer. Okay, now just hold it still for just a second and let the camera, you can see the edges. The, it's the center is what we can't see well because of the light. So if you tilt it away from you, I think if you tilt it away from you, you'll be able to see it. Let's try a darker one. Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect. So you see the edges get real thin, but the center is thicker. And what that does is it allows you to fold it and pinch it together without making a hole. Beautiful. So, we're obviously not going to be able to finish this whole cake tonight because, it, like I said, it's a long process to get all these ones done. But I've made enough of them to give you at least the front half of the cake. So you pick your front half. In my case, I like to obviously leave the seams to either side. Um, I just, for a second there, had a 
issue finding the side because the seam is so hidden, which is why I love white paint. Um, so then I just take some decorator's gel. And, and that's this piping gel. Too. That's the Cal Jiva, is that right? Um, this one is actually just Wilton. I know. Oh, okay. Don't hate me, I know. <laughs> But for what I use it for, I just, there's really no reason to buy the expensive one because this is literally just gluing onto dummies. When I'm using it on a cake, I buy the Kaljava um, Decorators Clear Glaze. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I've been using the last few purchases I've made and it works great. So no complaints so far. Yeah, that's um, what I hear. People love that Kaljava Java. Yeah, it's, it doesn't, Taste bad, which is my problem with like this one from Wilton. I don't like the way it tastes. Gotcha. You can taste that. You can taste there's something there. Um, so I'm basically just applying some glue to the little section I'm going to do with you guys here so you can see. And then the ruffles just get applied. Quite literally, do you want me to put that light back on? The ruffles get applied quite literally just along the cake, along the bottom of the cake. Some people go top to bottom, some people go left to right. Mm -hmm. I kind of go a little bit of both. <laughs> and then there's three colors, so I am mixing those up to kind of give it a little bit more life and texture because they bounce off the three colors that are in the flowers that are on the cake. Now, some of these might not stick perfectly because I made them a while ago, a couple of hours ago, and they're drying. What you doing over there, Deb? But the beautiful thing about these ruffles is they make the cake look so pretty and it's not hard to do. It's just time consuming. But you know, if there's more than one of you in the kitchen and you've got someone who can cut circles while you stick or cut and roll while you stick them to the cake, it can get done pretty quickly. So how long would, I guess, how much would you charge for a cake just like this? Now, reminding everybody that location does make a difference. Absolutely. So a cake like this would be um, $190 if they wanted the pulled sugar on top. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that I'm sure that there are a ton of bakers out there right now, like, clenching their pearls. So let me stop you for a second. I have Atlanta an hour and 10 minutes from me. And that getting that out of someone for this type of cake is usually pulling teeth. So there's that. <laughs> that is Let's part see. of why I don't do a ton of the smaller cakes anymore. We stick to the big cakes. Gotcha. The big cakes people have no issue paying for, but when they see a small they even though this cake will serve 24 people, because it is two six inches stacked on, stacked on top of each other. You could even get served if you try hard enough. Um, so around here, people see a small they, they, This is a small cake. That's all they see. They don't see how much work went into it. They don't see any of that. So, and you know, unfortunately, what we have found here in town is that. What we've found here in town is that um, I think everybody, it, everybody who bakes has found whether you've been doing it a few months or many years, COVID has brought out the baker in everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, it's up to each baker to learn, which I take it upon myself to teach, that you have to charge your worth. You cannot go out there and sell somebody a $25 three-layer 
nine inch red velvet cake. Because when you want to raise your prices later, when you realize that you're working your butt off and not making any money, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But what that does, like in every market, is it brings the market value down. And then you, everybody else struggles to... I'm just whining, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm actually not whining. I'm doing just fine. But I know that I know that, that is the struggle a lot of the bakers in our groups are finding right now. I have the blessing that I'm one of two brick and mortars that do fund it. So because of that, it keeps me in demand. Yeah, always having that extra thing that people, other people don't do. Right. But I'm also blessed that I live in an area where we have five bakeries here. Three of us are custom studios and we all refer back and forth. We support each other. We refer to each other. We let each other know when there's somebody trying to buy a check and send a courier, I mean, buy a cake and send a courier to pick it up. And they want you yeah. to pay $750 to the courier. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that is a scam. As soon as you see it, run in the other direction. Mm -hmm. I, they almost got me, even though I already knew about it, because everything yeah. he had was so legitimate until he sent the check <laughs> and said, oh, my assistant wrote the check for the wrong amount. Could you cash it and pay the delivery driver who's going to come pick up mm -hmm. the cake? Unfortunately for him, I was very um, aware of the venue that he was supposedly having this wedding for 250 people at, and the venue can only seat 49. <laughs> so I called the venue and I said, hey, are you guys having a wedding on this date for this many people? She's like, no. All right. So as you guys can see, the front wow. is done. Is that focusing okay? Beautiful. Yes, it is. It's gorgeous. I love the ruffles. Like I also like the two toned. Yeah, so it looks like a little skirt on your cake. And then on top, and, and I, I am doing a pulled sugar decoration on top or a, in this case, an isomalt bowl, but you could do anything. You want to do macarons? Do macarons. You want to do cookies, decorated cookies. You want to do wafer paper flowers. You can do any of that. And the beauty is the way for paper flowers, you can make look a lot like these posies. This, this pattern is called Rosie Posy um, by Lily Pulitzer. She has amazing patterns. Um, they're all very vibrant. They're all very colorful. They're very popular. They're very pretty. Um, so I'm going to check on our bowl. What do you all think so far? Isn't this great? Um, Tamara wants to know where you can purchase the hexagon cutters from. Those are cool. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this or not. We print these. <laughs> I'm no, sure that you can find that. them online. I'm sure that you can find them online. Um, but we do print these. Um, my husband has a 3D printing company. He does all my cookie cutters, all my cake toppers, all that stuff. Um, so does, so does he sell them? Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. He, so he can make where do any, people... any cutter, any anything that you need that you can't find online. If you just send him an image and say, hey, I need to be able to cut this shape, he can print it. So where do people send him information or find so this his, information? His page is GASP, G like Gary, A like Apple, S like Sam, P like Paul. Creations official, all one word. Dot com. Um, that's no. yes, ma'am. Sorry. Or you can so get got, you can message him on Facebook as well. Facebook or Instagram. So I got Gasp G A S P Creations C R E A T I O N S Official O F F I C I A L dot com. Yes, ma'am. All right, there you guys go. And um, Lynette wants to know if you can do a drip on it. You absolutely can. Now, you need to keep in mind, this is an edible image. So it's not going to run like it's going to run on buttercream. It'll still run, of course. But it's not going to run like it would on buttercream.
but you could potentially do, you know, puffs of frosting all along the top and some sprinkles. You could do a drip on it. You could do the bowl. You could do right now the fans are the big thing. You could do a fan with some macarons and some candies. I mean, it's really, there is nothing you can't do on it. How about that? So what I'm doing now is I've taken off my little clips. I'm trying really hard not to break it because I am notorious for that. Ta-da. I'm pulling off my silicone mat. Now, you see how cloudy it is at the bottom? Uh, see, I think that's really pretty. <laughs> I think that's, oh, I do, I, I do as well. Here, yeah. it's clear because I pulled. So it's more clear here. But mm -hmm. let's hope I don't screw this up on live, right? You won't. <laughs> of course you, everybody knows it's normal. So when she said hitting it with the torch, this is hitting it with the torch. She doesn't actually hit it with the torch. Right. So I'm just getting, giving it a little bit of heat. And usually it clears it up a little bit. It Sydney does look like, like, like that's what I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty. So I am just giving it a little bit of heat and it's clearing up just enough. I don't want it to be transparent. I want it to be mm -hmm. transparent. But now, you very carefully, unlike me, like I'm a bull in a china shop. <laughs> oh, we can't see you now. There we go. Up a little further. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. So, of course, if this was real cake, I would put a little squirt of buttercream underneath just to hold the glass there. I would also be spraying this with PME. Right. Um, PME is basically going to give the whole thing this look. It's still going to be a little bit translucent, but it's going to give more right. of it this look. It'll, give it, it'll keep it shiny, and it'll keep this clear. Now, now, you guys saw how clear that was. That's exactly what I was talking about. It right. is amazingly clear, and you're not going to get that with any other product. Yeah, and if you look at, let me see, if you look at the edges, and I'm leaving the light on it on purpose. If you yeah. look here, it is, I mean, I can put my finger behind it. See? Yeah. It's completely And even clear. that clear has, has a little bit of blue in it, yep. and it's still that clear. And here, we're just Crystal kind of clear. So now you can take this bowl and you can leave it like this, stick it on with a little bit of buttercream, call it a day. Um, you can put candy in it. Some people put flowers in it. Some people will put gold along the edge. I'm not doing that because there's none of that on the cake. The only thing that if I right. wanted to, if I, if I was going to add anything else to it, I would just put a small, um, like a tight wafer paper rose in it. Very small just to give it something. But yeah. I other than that, I would not just I, I'm I like minimal and simple. Um so that that would be where I would stop. But there That's is gorgeous. There is so many things you can do with isomalt. I have only recently started playing with the um I know there is an official name for it, the blowing thingy. <laughs> <laughs> blowing the isomalt <laughs> the blowing thingy making globes like making globes <laughs> and making orbs and things like that I'm sorry yeah. you don't hate me <laughs> no you're fine you're fine but I only recently started playing with that I bought that at um, the ultimate sugar show and I've had it sitting there I've been afraid to try it and the other day I was I had a little bit of isomalt left and I was like you know what let me just try this. I sat there and I made a ball like this big and then crack. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. That's you know, it. By doing. But you still made the ball. You got it there. I did. It just I, crack, but I, made it. I can't make the ball. I'm, I'm actually too chicken to try because I think I will like blow it up. Like I would just, whoosh, and their glass would go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story of my Sydney, life. Sydney says it's called a sugar pump. Pump. See, I knew that was an official name for it. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and for those of you wondering why there is glad present seal over there, um, this right here that is covering my fondant to keep it from drying out is the glad present seal. Um, it sticks to the table. So if you rub oh, cool. it, if you rub it, unlike saran wrap, which would just sit over it, I can rub this and form a complete seal on my fondant. See how it's literally sticking yeah. to the table? It also, see, great. I'm for stuff like that. <laughs> That's it also awesome. works great with um, when you have a box that you need to leave the flap open because something's too tall inside and you don't have a tall box. I use mm -hmm. that goes off the front so the dust and stuff doesn't get inside. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. This is 